Okay, let's talk about concrete. All right, so concrete is made up of three basic materials. Number one is cement. Cement is that fine gray powder that they put in there to make it, the, it's got the chemicals in it that will, will harden with the addition of water. That will be number two. And then the third one is aggregate, okay? In concrete, there are two types of aggregate. Usually there's a small aggregate and a large aggregate. The small aggregate is usually in the form of sand, and the large aggregate will be in the larger rock that is in place into the concrete. The large aggregate usually makes up between 60 and 80 percent of its volume. All right, so what else can be added to concrete? Admixtures. Admixtures are things that are added to concrete to help with one thing or another. So an example would be you can admixture something to make the concrete more pliable, which in placing concrete, it's easier to work with. So you add something to make it set up faster or you in the summertime maybe you want to slow down the process because it's hot outside so you put an admixture in there to slow down the process of setting up okay um, those are admixtures the hydration is the process when the water mixes with the cement it forms that paste and it starts a process called hydration which is a chemical reaction you can tell because the, the concrete kind of heats up as the water reacts with the cement and this process runs through its course okay um, during the course the concrete is normally called green because it's a green color as it sets up once it's almost once it starts to get near the end of its hydration cycle then it turns the gray color that you everybody's normally um, sees concrete is the gray color okay um, like I said you could add an edge mixture and change the color though all right the other thing on here is slump slump has to do with how liquidy the concrete is when it's being placed okay um, the process of figuring slump is taking a metal tube or a funnel like this, filling it full of concrete, and then tipping it over so it sits in a pile like this. Um, a straight edge runs across, and then they measure the distance from the bottom of the to the top of the slump after the, the concrete is sat there for a while and that, that distance right there is called the slump. So when you're doing some of these um, roads, bridges, they have certain requirements for the slump. If it doesn't meet the requirements of the slump, they'll just refuse the entire load um, out of the truck. Okay, I mean, so you got nine or ten yards in a truck, and if it doesn't have the right slump on it, they'll just say, nope, I'm not taking it because it doesn't meet our requirements. So the slump is very important um, if you're going to do roads or bridges to make sure that you have the correct strength when you get done. Okay, so here are some of the PSIs that you would need if you're going to pour, um, the, uh, place the concrete. Like in your, if you're building sidewalks, 3,000 PSI because the only traffic is foot traffic or um, maybe something a little heavier, multiple people standing together, whatever. Um, 4,000 PSI for footings, foundations, and driveways. Um, 5,000 PSI for roads, and then 6,000 PSI for bridges. And of course, PSI stands for pounds per square inch. So that has a pressure of 6,000 pounds per square inch for a bridge. So um, the concrete is strong enough 
to support um, whatever it's being designed to support. Okay, so basically this is a concrete in uh, a quick overview of concrete, the basic ingredients of concrete, what admixtures are, what hydration is, what slump is, um, and then how many PSI uh, that you would need to pour or place, the correct term is place concrete, uh, whether it's sidewalks, footings, foundations, or roads or bridges. So 